become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding everybody golden era bookworm here and today i'm going to share with you a look at your physique june of 1951 with steve reeves on the cover doing one of these turning back shots very classic shot you can see everything from the musculature of the upper body down towards the legs you can see the width and spread of his back his triceps the tiny waist the well-defined legs hamstrings and of course massive calves of steve reeves of which he was well known for a beautiful aesthetic physique it's a great pose not my most favorite pose of steve reeves but nevertheless a very classic um, cover to a very classic magazine from the silver era i'll um I guess jump to the most I think important article which I covered only a couple of nights ago on this channel and that was how to use the chinning bar for amazing back development and in this particular article I did do a video on this which is linked above but basically for all of you people that keep asking me about silver era methods for spreading the scapula I think this article speaks volumes. I mean, yes, I, I always get criticism when I'm sharing uh, the opinions of bodybuilders from the silver era. People go, it can't be done, this and that, when it's about the rib cage development, whether, whether it's about the spreading of the scapula or whatever. These are not my words, okay? These are not my words. I'm simply sharing the information. If you don't like it, you can switch the channel. Very simple, right? But I'm only sharing what, for example, in this case, Marvin Eda has talked about and if you haven't seen the video I highly recommend you watch it because uh, Marvin explains that using the chin-up bar which was a staple for all silver era bodybuilders including Steve Reeves, Reg Park etc. Uh, Leroy Colbert of course who was one of Marvin Eda's uh, training partners and best friends they all used especially a lot of different variations with the chin-up in order not just to develop the back musculature and the arm musculature and the shoulder uh, girdle strength because it does really work on your shoulder girdles um, i mean a lot of the exercises they could do back then for example chinning to the back of the neck and, and upright rows and all these things that people would not dare do nowadays is because they had strong joints and incredible mobility and the chin-up variations given essentially are to to warm up just a normal chin-up followed by uh, what's what's called a, a very wide grip chin-up but you use kettlebell handles as shown here by, by Marvinita and what this allows you to do especially if you go really really wide is that it starts bringing the scapula out and these kinds of movements become very small these kinds of pull-ups the range of motion is very very short and basically you end up working the shoulder girdle and the musculature that surrounds the shoulder girdle when you do these very short range of motion pull-ups which essentially works the scapular muscles and the ligaments and the tendons and this is why Marvin Eder states profusely in this article with most of the exercises given here that it's supposed to make you one inch wider this is one of his secrets again his own words not mine if you've got a problem with it whatever um, so he gives the following exercises as a warm-up you perform a set of 10 to 12 reps of just the normal pull-up followed by very very wide grip as wide as you can go of these kinds of uh, short range pull-ups which begin to work the scapula this is then followed it's a very systematic approach because then it's followed by what's called vertical bar pull-ups which again involve the use only of the scapular muscles that the motion is very very small i would say it's i would dare to say it's about five to six inches only because you're just basically moving yourself up by the strength um, of your lats and um and the scapular muscles right so and i, I think your rear deltoids going to are going to get a hell of a lot of workout here as well in these vertical bar pull-ups which i'll just blow up for you so you can really see what's going on you can see that's marvin there holding the bar uh, in a neutral grip and just shrugging his way up using his scapular muscles his trapezius using um, his lats and his uh, sc uh, scapular muscles um, 
so these are the, the major exercises that are given. He also talks about, what is it? There's another one. Oh yeah, it's not shown very well here, but it's kind of like a one arm, uh, what are they called? Uh, nowadays they call them arrow pull-ups, where you basically go, it's, it's called, it's, he calls it a one, con, one arm concentration, I believe, um, a pull-up where you alternate from side to side. So basically, you, you pull yourself halfway up, and then, as you can see, he's pulling himself up towards, the, in this case, the right side. Um, and it's called, a, nowadays, I believe, an, an archer or bow and arrow, something like that, uh, pull up. And then he goes down again, pulls up halfway, and this time goes towards the, the left side, pulling himself as much as possible with the left. So you basically alternate from pulling yourself up and then pulling to the right as much as possible, down and pulling to the left. This is not necessarily going to be working the scapula or spreading the scapula apart. It's actually going to be working your arms and your lat muscles a lot more so than other chin-up variations. And of course, the final variation he gives is the one-up chin-up, which I guess progresses from that bow and archer uh, pull up where you assist yourself with your free arm basically uh, on a vertical arm to just help you complete that one arm chin up. These are the variations and of course he gives a, a stretch at the end which involves uh, bracing the vertical bar like so, interlacing the fingers and bracing a vertical bar and then twisting. You can see he's twisting his upper body and really getting a hell of a stretch, a tremendous pull on the lats. Uh, again, to, to increase the mobility and release the fascia of the uh, muscles that have been worked. So these are Marvin Eder's recommendations on how to spread the scapula. Essentially, you're going to be performing a lot of uh, bizarre variations of the chin-up or, or slash pull-up. Uh, a small range of motion movements that really tax the shoulder, girdle and scapular musculature. Again, his own words. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the Silver Era methods for spreading the scapula, I've been asked about this many, many times before. Check out my website, www.goldenerabookum.com, where you're going to find, in particular, the book by Steve Reeves on broadening the shoulders. Steve explains many exercises that he used in particular, and he believes actually also help spread the scapula apart. You'll find this and much more on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. Uh, now I'm going to go through the rest of the magazine, which I found, again, these magazines are just gold. So I'm um, going quickly through the ads, and the editorial. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of weightlifting back then, and I'm not really going to go through that because this channel is not really all about that. Ludwig Schusterich, I believe, was an Austrian bodybuilder back then. And this, is, this talks about his comeback when he was in his, uh, early, I believe, late 30s. He had uh, gained a lot of weight, and I mean, he, he did gain uh, some fantastic musculature when he got back into bodybuilding. Basically saying, uh, you know, you can never come back, just like I've been told before with my own story. Of course you can. Of course you can. There's, there's no such thing as it's too late to bodybuild. It's too late to, to help yourself. No way. Anybody can do it. It's been done 80 years ago, 70, 80 years ago. It can be done today, of course. Um, so, yeah, some very inspiring story of Lud Schusterich there, who uh, came back in his late 30s, or I believe early 40s. I did cover this particular article on developing the biceps using some of the exercises that, for example, a very, very young Leroy Colbert pictured here with already, uh, as he says here, a superboy with the power of a superman 17 year old leroy colbert his arms already measured 18 inches and are gaining weekly in size and shape they used to call him the monster joe weeder called him the monster because he was a monster he was having monstrous 21 inch arms and all natural fantastic exercises are shown here i've done a video again linked above and in the description basically this um raising elbow alternating curl where you raise the elbow past the shoulder, was famously performed by Leroy Colbert, amongst other exercises shown in this particular article. A really good article. 
Uh, the power of mental concentration. Well, I won't talk about that one. I've already covered this particular article. This one is about, I believe, Abe, Goldberg, uh, Abe Goldberg's gym. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is... I'm not going to talk about this article either. <laughs> Sorry, some of them don't really appeal to me that much. They're not very interesting to talk about. This, however, The Mechanics of the Squad, again by one of the most legendary authors, David P. Willoughby, is a fantastic article that talks about the weights that you can use and how it affects, how do your joints affect, um, the, I get, how, to put it, how to put it better. Uh, depending on how much weight and what kind of squat you are performing, whether it is the hack squat or the squat, um, how it affects your musculature and your joints is essentially what is talked about in this article. Essentially, what it tells you is that the hack squat loads the quadriceps way more than the back squat, which tends to load the lower back and hip musculature, as well as the hamstrings, not so much the quads. So I guess the squat is an excellent developer for power, strength, and overall body mass, whereas a more, you could say, uh, focused exercise for the quadriceps would be the hack squat as performed by Steve Reeves with the heels elevated and the barbell held behind you. Uh, A very, very good and in-depth exercise. He goes through all the physics of it. As you can see, David P. Willoughby, typical tape. I mean, this guy analyzes everything to the damn, you know. Uh, yeah, it, it's incredible the way he, he talks about it. I mean, the guy was a genius. He, he, he was really fantastic when he talks about um, his over-analysis of everything makes it, I guess, overly clear what you should be doing for which body part, which exercises. It's an excellent um, article on the mechanics of the squad. Here's an article I, um, that I really enjoyed as well from Reg Park on how to develop powerful Speedy muscles, speedy muscles, well not really speedy muscles, but more like power. Essentially, the use of short range explosive motions, such as the bouncing deadlift, the um, bench press off a block, the, uh, I believe the, the, um, yeah, the jerk off a block, and also uh, just three, uh, no, not three quarter squats, a quarter squats, all to develop joint and tendon Uh, strength as well as power, explosive power, especially for an athlete. Pretty good exercises. They won't necessarily develop too much bulk unless you're using extremely heavy weights, Um, but they do develop uh, explosive power in your joints. Uh, Only when performed, of course, with with light exercise, uh, light weight, sorry. But if you do go heavy, I guess it would really strengthen the, the joints and tendons in preparation for a greater range of motion. And I guess the the performance of these exercises as they were done on blocks and on squat racks was the um, the uh, these exercises pre uh, how to put it these exercises were the predecessors of using in what we do nowadays which is performing these exercises on a power rack right so these short range of motion, limited range of motion exercises today are performed on power racks, which is much, much safer. But essentially, these are the exercises that were performed back then, just using different apparatus, still had the same result. Um, And of course, um, you know, you've got to celebrate the silver era for being the pioneers who came up with such fantastic exercises. Of course, Reg Park, well known for, for using incredible weights, used, of course, these uh, small range of motion, powerlifting motions to develop incredible strength, which is why he was able to fi- uh, bench press, for example, 500 pounds, right? Um, no wonder he learned that. He also learned that, I believe, from Marvin Eder. Yeah, so some, some really good articles here. Uh, now, there's a good course here on, on definition given by Alan Stephan, one I have not covered on my channel, but essentially it involves... A lot of motions, especially for developing the waist. And that's... Oh, right. This particular article. This one's a rather sensitive one. And I say that because when I was looking through this magazine uh, a couple of months ago, when the whole issue in the United States 
on racism came back, not that it ever has really gone away. Um, I read this article, and the first thing I noticed was, of course, these photos of the 1940 Mr. America, um, showing John Grimmick here holding the statue, the I should say the trophy, and an amazingly defined Chick Deutsch standing right next to him, as well as David Asnes, two darker colored men, bodybuilders back then in the 1940s, who I believed had way better conditioning and equal, if not better, development, yet did not place as highly, or I, I really don't think that they should have come fourth, and I think it was fifth or seventh, I forget. And when you compare it to the to the second and third place winners, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I created an, a video back then called the racist history of uh, bodybuilding in the AAU. And of course, uh, it was during the time when, um, when, uh, that, when, uh, when the process, I'll, I'll just say when the problems were, were just starting to reignite in, in America, when the flames were reigniting. And, um, yeah, uh, was it timing? Was it was it uh, destiny that I came across this photograph at the same time this happened? I don't know, but I just show you this photo so you can judge for yourself. I mean, here's another one again of Grimmick, and you can see the fantastic development of Chick Deutsch here. His abdominals are just fantastic. You can really see them, and I, I do think that back then it was unfair. It's not the only case. It's not the only case, not so, not, not at all. I mean, I've spoken to Robbie Robinson, and he basically left the AAU and joined the IFBB because of the racist placings. There was also um, cases with many, many other dark bodybuilders at the time. And so there has been a very long racist history, especially in the AAU, and it might be something that I'll cover in the future. Anyway, I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video. If you have enjoyed this review of Your Physique 1951, uh, June 1951 with Reeves on the cover. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me your comments. Thank you for watching. And to support my channel, please donate via PayPal, become a patron, and visit my website for out-of-print books and courses on old-school bodybuilding. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.